Howdy, everyone. Welcome to Tilson Live. It is Tuesday. It's two o'clock. We are live on Facebook, live on YouTube. I am Eric Allard, part of the fourth generation of the Tilson family, coming at you live with the best host of all Tilson Lives, all things marketing, all things customer experience, Her Majesty Dawn. Hello, Dawn. <laughs> hey, Eric. How are you? Oh, uh, I'm good. It is the most wonderful time of the year, as we it all is. know. Um, so we, I, I hope we all got to see the intro. If you didn't, when we're done, go back and watch it. Uh, mm -hmm. Don was very careful to weave in all of the Christmas decorations that people have been doing on their homes, sharing with us inside, outside, all the things. So um, obviously, before we get started today, drop into the comments where you're watching, where you're watching, where you're watching from. Sorry, where you're watching from, where you're thinking about building, what part of the process that you're in. You guys know the drill by now. We are here for you to answer all of your questions about building a home on your land. Now, that being said, Don, we have a very special edition today that is very timely and in nature. So what's yes. going on? Um, so, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, you did that poll of do you want warm weather for Christmas or cold weather for Christmas? And so all you cold weather people are getting what you asked for. <laughs> um, it is coming. about to get really, really chilly in Texas. And it doesn't, I say it doesn't usually do that, but I feel like this is the third year in a row that we're talking about it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, historic, so this historic is cold, but, um, yep, yep. we're going to talk mm -hmm. about how to make sure that the house that you currently live in, um, is prepared for, for that weather and how you keep your pipes from freezing, you know, safe use of your fireplace, all of that kind of stuff of being ready, you know, for this storm. Yeah. So guys, we know, storm, we know, it's really cold. we know the wound is fresh enough from uh, February of 21 with Snowmageddon yeah. happened uh, here in Texas. So good news. Um, people are pretty familiar with this and remember how bad that was. And so um, all of the bug box store shelves are empty. Yeah, <laughs> the, People are already buying all the things. I noticed not only are they buying the, the foam for insulating things and the outside water spigot covers, all those things. Um, they're now also going ahead and buying the plumbing fixtures, the parts, the <laughs> valves, all the things that they're going to need to repair. They're like, it's going to blow. That's fair. We know that. So let's go ahead and get all the repair parts we're going to need before those are out of stock. Because that's what happened last time is all of those right. got raided afterwards. So we've got a bunch of preppers running around here. I, was, I, I visited a few big box stores today in my rounds around, um, around the Beltway in Houston and around the Grand Parkway, um, checking out some of our locations. We have an awesome team. Our strategic response team is running around all over the state. So shout out to Alex, uh, Jose, Richard, Brian for going around taking care of all of those facilities. Um, but guys, yeah, that's what we're here to talk about today. So drop in, tell us a howdy, tell, your, tell us where you're watching from, where you're building, what part of the process that you're in, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, and again, we've got some, uh, you know, Don quickly put together, given the forecast, some, some really, really uh, pertinent material for us to, to take a look at. But we're going to go over some of the, some of the kind of the low hanging fruit of what you can do that's real easy. Um, hopefully you're already working on this. You do have a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Um, I think in most of our areas you have until sometime Thursday afternoon to Thursday night to Friday morning, depending on where you are in the state. So you've got a solid 48 to 55 hours ish. Um, those of you who have Amazon prime might be able to leverage that. Yeah. Um, I know Don's been doing that. So yeah, uh, folks, tell us where you're watching from. Tell us where you're building, what part of the process you're in. Obviously we will answer all of your build on your lot questions as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but we know a lot of you are uh, kind of seeking this rural lifestyle, this independent lifestyle. This is part of it, folks. 
Um, you're going to be faced with these situations when you're out there in the middle of nowhere. You got water wells, you got septic systems, you, you got you know vulnerable power situations. Um, but but drop in, we'd love to hear from you, Don. We have anybody joining us? Yeah. Oh, also, if you got sure. questions, yeah. drop those in too. Absolutely. And then also, you know, I know if you're a frequent viewer, you're used to hearing from Will on, Will from Klondike. Um, he did check in with us before the show to let us know that he's not going to be able to tune in because he has a lot of little critters that he has to take care of and make sure that they're going to be good. So nobody worry about Will. He's We got him. Will's coming. Um, yeah, he's got a lot of winterization to do. A lot of critters. Yeah. We got Krisha saying howdy. Thanks for joining us. Howdy, Krisha. <laughs> we got Katie. Agreed. Dawn is the best. Looking forward to y'all teaching us about this just in time. Thank you, Katie. It's not like she works for me or anything, and that's why she's saying that. Of course. Of course. Um, we got Neil. Been away for a while. Hello from Virginia Welcome Beach. Back. Building in Toller. All right. Nice. It's going to get cold I there, too. the Corvette. The Corvette. I, it, it, it takes me right back, Neil. Thanks for coming back. <laughs> Glad to it's see you. Um, we've got Donald. Howdy from St. Hedwig and our new Tra Tilson Travis model. Moved in March 31st of this year. Awesome. All right. About to have your first Christmas, Donald. That's really yeah, cool. That's awesome. And um, we've got Amanda. Hey, y'all. We're watching from Bear County. We're set to have our foundation poured tomorrow. Awesome. All right. Here we go. We got Casey and Kelly. Hello from Canton. Two years into our Tilson home and love it. Awesome. Oh, Glad to hear cool. that. Awesome. We've got Julie building a live oak in Tilson County. Just finished sheet rocking and we'll be taping and bedding after Christmas. So excited. Awesome. Very cool. We got Rebecca wishing us a Merry Christmas from Driftwood. Merry Christmas, Rebecca. We have our friend from Florida. Um, I'm not sure what the weather's going to be doing there. So let us know. Are you staying warm or are y'all getting right. cold too? I have, my, I have my reasons to believe I wish I was going to be in Florida in the next 48 hours. Hey, you know, they have a different level of cold though too. So we'll have to, we'll have to see what they think. Uh, Chris is saying Merry Christmas. Thank you, Chris. Merry Christmas to you. Uh, we got Vidana. Hello, y'all from Corsicana. Getting close to a finished project. Really excited. That's awesome. Oh, Glad very to cool. hear that. Uh, we've got Juan from Austin. We're building in Kempner, Texas. Um, I do work for the water company in Lakeway. Just here to learn more. Oh, man. Okay. Um, Very cool. Yeah. Glad you're here. And hey, you can teach us a thing or two. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Let us know if we get anything wrong. Travis Special Utility District number 17, I think is close by there, Juan. So if that resonates, let me know. That was, that was always a thing. But yeah, man, bring it on in. All right. Awesome. We got Linda watching from Arlington, building a Whitney D in Maypearl. Welcome back, Linda. We have Will Howdy looking to build a Tampico in Wilson County. All right, Will, bring it on. Bring it on. We got Kenny. Hello and Merry Christmas from Burleson, Texas. Building a Travis home should be completed mid-January. Awesome. awesome. So you're almost there. And we have Kimberly wishing us Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, oh, Kimberly. Yeah, Merry Christmas. All right. So, uh, guys, obviously the format's a little different today. We've got, mm -hmm. um, I know this I'm, seems to be cutting out. But anyway, the format's a little different today. We are going to give you some information. We're going to talk about some things. If you've got questions, if you have specifics, um, we can help you with most of those things. I'm not intimately familiar with how every single home is built uh, that you may be living in right now, but um, I do understand how gravity works and I understand now water and I know when it freezes. Um, so I, th these are things that, that we can probably help you with. And uh, I certainly have fixed enough uh, to tell you what not to do. Uh, I can help. Mm -hmm. I can help with that. So let us know. We'd be glad to hear from you guys, but otherwise Don, I'm going to let you, uh, kind of take it away. All right. Um, so we do have a couple of videos uh, that we put together with our warranty team to show you. And the first one is kind of preparing all of your pipes to make sure that they're not going to freeze during the cold temperatures. So we will talk about that. Awesome. In this video, we're going to talk about protecting the exterior pipes around your home during freezing temperatures. All of the hose bibs around your home will need to be protected. The first thing to remember is to disconnect any water supply hoses from the hose bibs. The reason for doing this is to prevent any water in the water hose from freezing up into the hose bib. This could also cause potential damage into the interior of the home. Here are two types of products you may use to protect the hose bibs. First is a foam cover that connects to the hose bibs and is pulled tight against the side of the home. Second is an insulated bag that slips over the hose bib and is tied with the provided strings. You may visit your local hardware store to purchase these items. To further help protect the pipes from freezing, you'll want to make sure the heat is turned on in your home until the weather warms up and keep your cabinet doors open underneath your sinks. Lastly, leave your sink on so that a slow drip of water comes out and keeps the pipes from freezing. 
some great tips there and two two options there to kind of cover those outside hose bibs. Um, yeah, and that, it's a it, yeah, it's really really important that you that you pay attention to all of those things. And and I want to talk about mm -hmm. that in two different ways. You know, obviously most of the situations we're talking about are going to be people living in the home, right? Um, I, I'll talk later about if it's like a vacation home, one that's not inhabited, right? Because you want to do some take some extra precautions with, with something like that. If you're not going to be there to be able to, to know if something goes wrong or if you lose power or something like that. So um, I've experienced with both. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I can tell you what we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but the, but the idea of having these, and th those they do have in stock everywhere I was going. I talked to a guy at, at, at an orange box store um, today. Uh, he was helping me get bottles of propane, which by the way, I had to go to three different places to get uh, propane, which I found that interesting. So, Oh, wow. said they received 1,800 of those uh, little hose bib covers this morning, and they were down to 24. And that was at like 11 o'clock, by the way. Like that was oh, wow. Really much. So people are, are mowing through those. Again, the, the, the wound is fresh from, from the last snowmageddon. So good. Get out there. Get your stuff. Um, be sure. And we don't show it in the video as well, but there's like a little rubber hole in there. You just kind of loop that over the hose bib and pull that thing tight uh, up against it, and, and you're good. If you don't have any of those things, can't find them, hardware stores out, do not panic. Do not freak out. Get duct tape wherever you are. Like They're going to have duct tape somewhere. The paint department, okay. somewhere you go, get duct tape. Rag, towel, anything you have, put it around that hose bib. Tape it up real good so that it doesn't get wet. So that's better than nothing. It's way better than nothing. So if you can't find the stuff, don't freak out. Not the end of the world. You have towels, you have rags, you have washcloths, you have something you can sacrifice. Put it around there, duct tape it all the way around to just to water protect it and hold it in place. You're good. That that ugly yeah. Christmas sweater that you bought that you've already yes. worn to the party. Or just... that was given to you. Whatever. It's fair. Maybe the, it's fair. maybe a couple of ties you don't wear anymore. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Make make the sacrifice. Uh, we've had a couple of people join us with some questions and comments. So I'll bring it on. Yeah, let's see it. Uh, we got Varen. Hi, y'all from Fort Bend. Just finished painting the walls in our Polidoro. Awesome. Nice. Um, and we've got Donald uh, sharing a couple days ago. The outside temperature was 50 on our attic was 55, a five degree difference. What I'm concerned Ooh. about is let's say the temperature gets down to 15. Then that might mean our attic would be 20, which would be a problem since that's where... Um, that's what I'm wondering about. So is that going wow. to be a problem? So it is not likely to freeze in your attic. No, um, it's not likely to get that cold in, mm -hmm. in the attic, as it were, because you got, you got, and I don't know if your gas or electric heat, I don't know if your spray foam or, or bat and blown. I think you're in the central Texas area. So maybe on the bubble of bat and blown, but uh, if it's foam, it certainly won't. Bat and blown, still probably not going to get below freezing up there. Uh, even if it does, that's what, this is one of the reasons we use PEX piping. So PEX cross-link polyethylene pipe, does it freeze? Yes, it will freeze. The key about that is it has to, it, it's not going to burst like PVC, CPVC, or copper would do. Uh, in other words, the polyethylene pipe can actually expand. So worst case scenario, maybe some of your exterior walls where the plumbing goes in the attic and comes down um, to like a commode or maybe a sink on an outside wall, you might lose the ability for that to function for a time. Uh, the water won't flow. It doesn't mean it bursts, but you can climb in the attic and see. Another thing to think about, Donald, is I'm glad you brought this up. It, be monitoring that if it does get that cold. And obviously it's going to be colder at the bottom of your attic than it would be at the top. It's the whole heat rises thing. Um, mm -hmm. If you're really concerned about it, drop the disappearing stairway down and leave it up and open it up to, to the rest of us. So allow the heat that you, I know it's not the most energy efficient thing on the planet to do, but the next 48 to 72 hours is not an energy saving expedition. This is a keep your stuff from getting ruined kind of expedition. Right. So drop those disappearing stairways down. If you have more than one, pull those down and let the heat that you're heating the home with, it will go back up into that attic and it will keep that attic warm enough. Yes, it will be uncomfortable probably if you're standing underneath there because cold air will be coming down, but Mm -hmm. Drop the disappearing stairway down, let heat from the home get up there to that attic. It will keep it above. All you got to do is keep it at 32, 33 degrees. That's all you got to do. Uh, it doesn't have to be 75 up there. Don't need sunglasses and a tanning bed. It just needs to be 33 degrees. Okay, perfect. All right. 
And we've got Joe um, staying warm in downtown LaPorte. Merry Christmas to uh, all. Still hoping to get my Shiloh in Poolville. Awesome. Well, Joe Barry, I'm going to tell you what, it's going to be freezing in LaPorte too. Uh, I checked the forecast and it's it's coming to Houston. Houston's going to go, what is it, from 71 to 19 degrees? Is that right? Yeah, now? when I looked yesterday, it was 71 to 19 in one day. So you're going to get all four seasons. You're going to go 50 um, degree temperature drop in one yeah. day. It's going to be Back it's going to be a rough day. Uh, we got Anne. Hi from Cinderella in Fayette oh. County. Looking forward to our first Christmas. Merry Christmas to the Tilson family. Thank Merry you. Christmas. Merry Christmas to Merry you. Merry Christmas, Madison. And we've got Julie with two questions. When they tape in bed, do they do the inner corners and the ceiling corners where the walls meet the ceiling? And what comes next after sheet rocking? So the answer is yes, we do. So yep, those the if you'll ever go look at sheetrock tape, uh, a roll of a roll of sheetrock tape, it actually has a crease right down the middle of it. Um, and that's exactly what it's for. That crease is for interior corners. So you can either use it flat or you can use it for an interior corner. Um, typically exterior corners or outside corners are done with a corner bead, either metal or plastic bead, but interior corners are done with tape. Okay. So, uh, then after sheetrock, uh, they'll texture it, which is probably part of the, you said part of the sheetrock portion, but they texture it. And then depending on timing, it's either going to be cabinets or paint. Hopefully paint. We'd like to do, we'd like to paint it next, what we call wall it out. Um, uh, or, what in some cases will be the uh, actually that's not true. We'll do interior trim. So your your doors, baseboard, forgot about that. <laughs> doors, baseboards. We all, all that want that. Stuff. We want trim. Yeah, we'll have those in there and then the cabinets. But but sometimes they will go wall out the walls um, before the trim. It, it's what it comes down to is the timing of which contractors are available and and what the the backup is. So mm -hmm. ideally, we run baseboard. We hang your interior doors, caulk, putty, prime, and paint the interior then put in cabinets, but sometimes we go ahead and wall it out. Sometimes we, the trim carpenter goes in and does all of this stuff. And then Kent Moore installs the cabinets too. And then we have to cover the cabinets and then paint everything. So it kind of gets, it becomes a matter of who's available at that point, scheduling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Um, we've got Julie getting the pump house walls on today, prepping for five degrees in nearly Oklahoma. Yeah. yeah. Cold. Yeah, yeah no, suddenly cold. everyone's winterizing. Like today's the day. All, all the summer yes. projects, it was too hot to build the pump house. And I'm, by the way, I'm right there with you. I have, a, I have an unfinished cover for my well to put over top of it. It's going to get finished tonight or tomorrow night. Like it's happening. Uh, it, just, it, it just eked its way to the top of the priority list. So um, yeah, be, be the ant. Be the ant. Don't be the, what's the other, what's the other example? The, the fable. The ant like saves stuff. Uh, maybe it's the cricket. I don't know. The ant does yeah. all the work when no one else wants to do the work, and then the, the cricket or somebody grasshopper. The grasshopper. Wants grasshopper. The grasshopper. Yeah. Grasshopper wants it all today. Yeah. Be the ant. Don't be the grasshopper. You have to find out why. <laughs> all right. Uh, Krisha's asking: Is it better to shut the water off at the meter or the cutoff valve at the valve at the house? I'm in the Houston area. Yep. Great question. So um, I like. It depends on where the cut for your house is. Um, so if the cutoff for the house is above ground, so I know you got you got the meter at the street or somewhere in that area, it's definitely in, in the ground. And then it, a water line runs from there to your home and it has a valve of some sort that goes in. If that's in the ground, you can cut it off there. E either one is fine. Um, I, I, you know, if it's above the ground, like if, you, if it comes up on the outside, then goes in, and, and I have a house where it does that, it comes up and then goes in. Um, if it's, if you're not going to be at, definitely cut that off at the street and figure out a way to drain that other one, either with a hose bib or something. Um, mm -hmm. cause that's a little, uh, that's a vulnerable area where it's going to be above the ground right now. And if it's in the ground, it's only going to be in the ground six or eight inches because Texas, that's what we do. Um, <laughs> kick a little dirt on it. We're good. It's good. It's buried. It's fine. But, but, uh, Grisha, if, if you're going to be at home, I wouldn't necessarily cut the water. Now, if this is the vacation home, which you're talking about for sure, I'd cut it off at the street. And at the house, like I'm gonna take any chances. I'm cutting it off everywhere. She says uh, above ground at the house. Yeah. So I, I mean, if you're really concerned about it, cut it off at the street. But if you're gonna be living in the house, um, cutting the the water off to the house only does you any good if you can drain the house, mm -hmm. right? So so cutting the water off to the house. I mean, it, it's better than nothing because if something does burst, it's it's gonna just be the water that's in the house. It won't be more water coming from the street, keep, keep flowing. Uh, if something does happen, guys, well, if you get a, you get a, a catastrophic failure, a pipe burst, something like that, what Chris is saying is right, cut the water off. That's a step one. Right. No matter if you don't do anything else, cut the water off and that will stop the bleeding literally. So 
the in this case though if, if you're living at the house and you have heat and you're all good I, I wouldn't cut the water off necessarily particularly if i don't have a way to drain that house um, i only cut the water off to the house if i can drain it and you drain the house with a hose bib so the best way to drain the house um is cut the water off like chris is saying either at the street or at the cutoff there uh, um i'd probably cut it off at that cutoff and then go inside open up all the faucets and go outside and open up all the hose bibs and truly just drain it out. Now, what that does not drain is your water heater. Mm -hmm. um, and again, shouldn't be an issue as long as you don't lose power. So if you're, if it's a vacation home and you're concerned that you may lose power, it's a rural area. Um, and, and you're not going to be a top priority because the power company typically knows if someone's living there full time or not. Um, and usually the more rural you get those co-ops, they know who lives where and they, right. they know, you know, I mean, and, and, and as it should be, if I don't have an oxygen machine to run or breathing machine or CPAP or something like that, like that person takes priority, a retirement or vacation home ought not take priority. So mm -hmm. in those situations, I drain everything in a time like this, I drain it all. Um, I drain the water heaters. I drain the house. Um, I, I'm a little bit manic about it. I actually will even take antifreeze and uh, put it in the P trap. So I'll pour antifreeze down every sink down every commode in the tanks of the commode. I actually will dip the water out of the tanks of the commodes, like truly manic, but you will only go to a place one time and turn the water on. You had been there in six weeks and see it blow everywhere before you change your behavior. <laughs> so that's fair. Um, there's P traps you can't get to, you know, this is an elevated home. It's not in a slab. So it's a different situation, but like even in the tubs, I pour antifreeze down there to get the P traps of the tubs because they're technically below, you know, they're, almost at ground level. Um, so you can go pretty extreme with, with true and proper winterization. Um, but if you're going to be living there, you don't need to, to panic and do anything until and unless you lose power. Right. And you're on a shot clock. Okay. That makes sense. Um, Kevin is asking why we don't do masonry fireplaces. Oh, great question, Kevin. Um, so yeah, I, I do love a big, giant, full masonry fireplace. There, I grew up with one in a Tilson home. Um built in the 1970s. So the, the, the kicker of them is, Kevin, they are horribly inefficient mm -hmm. uh, from an energy standpoint. So uh, they, that, and that's one con. That's a pretty big one. So you're paying us uh, really, really good hard-earned money to make your home extremely energy efficient, extremely tight. So uh, part of that is, you know, punching a gigantic hole in the roof, in the living space. So the, the conditioned air space and the roof of the house Um the brick itself is porous or the stone is porous. So you got a big hole in your roof. Air can get in and out very easily. It, it's almost impossible anymore to pass energy code with a full measure of fire. In fact, it's, it is impossible to pass mm -hmm. energy code with a full measure of fire. That's the biggest reason we don't do it. The other downside to it is they leak. They may not leak the first year we put them in. They may not leak the first eight or 10 years we put them in, but eventually they're going to leak. Um, the flashing that's that's attached to them, the metal flashing we use, and even all the, the silicone and roof patch and everything, the pitch that we use to attach it and waterproof it over time, it sits out in the Texas sun and it, get, it, it just deteriorates. Um, and that flashing gives way or the pitch gives way. And it, it is, and again, that it, the brick or stone itself is porous. So water can get in there, get down in the living space. Mm -hmm. and, and that's that's the other reason we we quit using them is they do unfortunately they they just they create a lot more issues than they provide benefits um but they're beautiful i love them they're awesome they just are horribly inefficient and they are a potential big downside yeah okay all right um our friend from florida saying sunday was my birthday wish me a happy oh. birthday just turned 24 happy birthday happy birthday Happy We'd love birthday. to know your name sometime, by the way. So we yes. can call our friend from YouTube at any. So if you will return, reciprocate, return the favor, we would, we would actually, I think Dawn said she would sing you happy birthday. If you told us your name, I just don't know. <laughs> oh, thanks for that. <laughs> Nobody wants that. <laughs> uh... All right. Juan is sharing RPZ for irrigation. Make sure it's turned off and drain. A lot of us forget about the irrigation backflow. Yes. Yeah. Make sure your sprinkler system is, is. Yeah. When, when are I, there are, and there's a gazillion YouTube videos you can go to after this show. You can't go there now. After yeah. this. They're uh, not available right now. Yeah. They're all down. Actually, they're probably all getting hit pretty hard. Lag time's <laughs> awful. You don't want to go see that. Um, yeah. But um, that's. That's, that's the, 
you know, it, it's one, you know, again, a lot, 91% of our customers are rural, right? So mm-hmm. um, it's not something that a lot of them have to worry about, but people who are building with us right now and living in a subdivision, for sure, um, that is something you may want to go take care of or call your irrigation company and ask them what, what the steps are to get that done. Cause yeah, that's, it's going to, it's going to happen. Um, yeah. Those are itty bitty little pipes and they're going to burst. That's a great, great point. Juan. Thank you for, thanks for putting that up. Yeah. There. Thank you for that. Uh, we got Katie, uh, Merry Christmas from the Nash family. Can't wait for our Breckenridge to be completed in Colorado County. Fingers crossed for March. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, we have Glenn asking, what does it take to burst PEX pipe? I heard it is bulletproof. All right. So uh, definitely not bulletproof, um, <laughs> but the it, it obviously has, you know, a higher a higher burst temperature. I'm sorry, lower burst temperature than copper um, uh, PVC, CPVC, uh, and obviously galvanized pipe. It, it can, fr- it's not even a matter of, can it burst? It can burst, but it would, it would take pressure more sh- more so than temperature. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So, um, and and it can handle way more psi than any water system is going to be able to um, put on it anyway. So the it expands. I and I could be wrong about this. So I'm sure some Google warrior would correct me, and I'm cool with that. Um, I I had understood that it was at least it would expand to two times its size. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that that's that's a good indicator of how that's going to how it's going to work um it can still freeze though so that's and again something to point out we do get some calls like my water's not running to my master bath you know commode or my master bath sink or some kind of you know mm-hmm. deal like that and typically it's because pex is coming down out of the attic onto an exterior wall um and it may free you know, the north side of the house you know if the winds will be blowing 20 to 30 miles an hour out of the north which i think is what they're calling for um mm-hmm. That that's so you got I think where I was in, in East Texas this weekend they're calling for it to be twelve degrees in, in Grapeland okay that's where it was twelve degrees um, on th- on Thursday night Friday morning whatever but they're calling for a wind chill of minus ten okay oh, wow. of wind, so that's and if you are if the bathrooms on the north end of a house um, and it's blow now this house was in, built in 1968 so it's not it doesn't have the things that the houses today have particularly the insulation um, or the exterior cladding for that matter um, mm-hmm. it's true masonite siding um, but it was a Tilson home built in 1968 but anyway the the there's a very good chance that if there's a pex pipe coming down there that will freeze and you will just lose all you'll lo- you'll just simply lose functionality to thaw it out, you can get in the attic and thaw them out. Do not do it with a propane torch or anything that has a flame. Do it with like a hair dryer, something like that. Something that does it gradually. Mm-hmm. doesn't get that hot. Because uh, what you don't want to do is damage the pipe, create a weak spot, and then you've, you know, done more harm than good. So, Yeah. Then you've, you've seen what it takes to make Pex pipe burst. Um. <laughs> <laughs> then you, you just record it for us and you'll have, you'll have your own. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I know Eric. We were talking a little bit behind, uh, ahead of time that you wanted to give a little advice if you do have those toilets or showers or any of that that are on an For exterior sure. wall. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. I forgot. And Krisha has kind of reminded me of that. So yeah, mm-hmm. if, if you got something on an exterior wall, um, I feel like I can show. I don't know if I can share this or not. Um, potentially. So, so like for instance, you know, you got the the Breckenridge here. Um, I think I'm showing the right thing. Yeah. I'm looking um, at a Breckenridge. So yeah, over here you can see that that you know the master, his and hers uh lavatories are on an exterior wall here. So let's say this was the north end of the house. Um what what I would recommend doing in this situation is you're gonna want to drip these sinks. Doesn't have to be a whole lot. Uh, and I know Jason Calloway in the video a while ago sp- uh, spoke to that. Um, to have these dripping. What the dripping does is it keeps water, you know, it, they don't have to be running, but let them drip at a decent enough rate um, where water will continue flowing through the pipe. So if water, water, it can still freeze when it's running. You've seen a river, right? You've seen a lake. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a whole lot harder for water to freeze when it's running than when it's sitting still. Right. Uh, going back to Kreesha's comment about, do I cut the water off? Like, again, I only cut the water off if I can drain the house. Otherwise, if I'm in the house and I've got, even if I lose electricity, I want to run those pipes. I want water to be running through the house. 
Um, and if you'll drip the pipes at this coldest point here, it still has water running throughout the house, right? It's kind of like the veins um, in, in your body. It's a, it's a artery system. So um, it, it, it keep the water running, drip the water. And that goes for a, a tub that goes for um, it goes for obviously lavatories, a shower. The only thing that's tougher about that, that would be a commode. Mm-hmm. Um, and if that's the case, it depends on how manic you are about this. Okay. Eric is, is pretty manic and I don't need a lot of sleep anyway. Um, so I'm probably going to be up every hour or two and I'm just going to flush that commode. Okay. Um, just to keep doing it, just to keep water flowing over there. Um, otherwise what you might do, turn the cutoff off, go ahead and flush the commode, get the water out of there. But again, there's water behind that wall where that valve is. I don't like water sitting still on a North end of a wall when it's going to be 12 degrees outside. I don't like that one bit. So keep mm-hmm. the water running. Okay. Perfect. And we have Richard asking, I don't know much about fireplaces. If you don't have traditional full masonry fireplace, how is it constructed? All right. So almost all fireplaces today, Richard, great question. They're all a, mm-hmm. a, a, a metal box. Um, it's a fire box. So it's, it's constructed out of metal. It's sheet metal. Um, it typically will have some type of a brick inlay inside it, like a heat heated brick inlay inside. It'll look like a mystery fireplace inside. Uh, it can be even trimmed around the outside with stone or brick. You can look at the video that, that Jason Calloway was doing a while ago that, that Christy was in where he's operate well i guess we'll see one later they actually operating. haven't seen that one yet but sorry good segue into it after this we're going to show you in a moment richard we're going to show you one that looks but they're made to look like masonry but they're actually mm-hmm. all metal inserts it's a it's a metal fire box insert that has a metal a triple it's usually a double or triple chamber flue um f-l-u-e coming out of the top um it's a cylinder that goes up so it's much it, it flashes um much easier um obviously it's, it's not porous because it's sheet metal uh, we and we can put hardy plank around it. We can put brick, like veneer brick around it um, that has a lot less propensity to leak. Same thing with a stone, a thin stone veneer around it, um, whatever you guys want to do. But that that's how they're done. It's a metal insert with a metal flue. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, and let's go ahead and look. We do have some tips um, for those of you who have a wood burning fireplace on how to make sure that you are using Check that safely. While wood-burning fireplaces are not designed to heat your entire home, they do create an amazing space for families to gather. Here are a few things you need to know before using your wood-burning fireplace. First, you'll want to make sure the flue is operable and in the open position before lighting or starting a fire. The handle that operates the flue is located at the top center of the front of the fireplace insert. To open the flue, move the handle from one side to the other. You can look up to the top of the firebox to confirm it's open. To close it when not in use, move the handle the opposite direction. It is very important to keep the flue in the closed position when not in use to prevent backdraft or unwanted air drawn into your home. Secondly, you'll want to consider the type of wood you are burning in your fireplace. Please do not burn pine. Pine will create a dangerous soot buildup in the chimney that could lead to the chimney fire. Oak is recommended wood to use in your fireplace. It is important to clean the chimney at least once a year or more depending on usage. This will prevent excess soot buildup that could cause an unwanted chimney fire. All right. Yeah, so that's a that's a really important thing. I think people will burn kind of whatever. Do not burn pine. Do not burn pine. Do not burn pine in there. There's a reason there's you know, pine's a great starter for fires. Um, uh, you've heard you've seen this called fat pine, which is part of the pine that still has a lot of sap in it and find out in the woods. And you can use, I mean, it's almost like lighter fluid. You can light it up and it will light. Uh, the reason is the sap is, is very, very flammable. And so mm-hmm. over the years, if you're burning pine in your fireplace, it, that sap will collect up and down that flue. And yeah, you could have a, a big, big bad day uh, doing yeah. that. But, but opening the flue, big deal. Be sure it's open. Yes, very You'll important. know if it's not pretty quick. <laughs> Smoke will be billowing <laughs> into your house. Um, It'll get a little uncomfortable. Get a little and uncomfortable. again, the homes we build are super, super tight, y'all. So I know this sounds crazy, but you might actually have to crack a window open. Not like crack one. Open <laughs> a window. Um, don't break glass, but open a window a little bit to get fresh air in. If you're having a hard time keeping the fire going, um, mm-hmm. it, it's typically, it's got, it doesn't have anything to do with, it's not getting good draw. It has everything to do with your house is built really, really tight and you're burning up all the fresh air that's in the house. So you need to provide additional fresh air. Right. Uh, 
so that's something to consider as well. But yeah, I mean, light that puppy up and let it start going. Go I, every gas station I've seen and big box stores got plenty of firewood here, and there's guys mm-hmm. on the side of the road selling it. Uh, there's girls on the side of the road selling it. <laughs> I've seen trailers and trucks and um, all, all the all the landscapers who are not landscaping today. They're selling firewood. So there you go. They're doing, they're doing re- really really well. Yeah. All right. We've got Amanda has a question. Um, at the site of our new home build, the Rufton pipes are exposed. Is there any chance they can get damaged in the freezing elements? Okay. So uh, good news, Amanda, they're probably PEX. Uh, so I mean, the, the PVC is not going to get hurt at all because it's all, that's drain anyway. So any PVC you see in your home, it's either for venting um, mm-hmm. gas out or, or it's for sewer. So it's not going to have any water in it anyway. Um, the PEX you do, it, it's not likely that that's... Um, energized yet it's not likely that, that, that we've put the water throughout the home um the answer is yes it could the good news is what's up with housing under construction don what's the deal um that is why we have uh builder's risk insurance um so tilson your actual home itself we are responsible for all of those components um so you don't need to worry about that we they are insured so any damage that we do get from from this weather uh, will be covered by that and will be taken care of and will all be fixed and, and good before you move in. So you don't need to be concerned with that. Worry about the house that you're you're living in at the moment. And then actually, we do have a question um, from David. Um, he He's asking about his well. Um, so not sure if anyone has asked yet, but looking for advice on well protection. My home is still under construction and no plumbing is tied now into we're the house. Talking. Yeah, that was going to be my so comment. We're responsible for the house, but like yeah. the well, that's going to be... Great, great question. So I'm, I'm, what I'm envisioning, uh, David, is that it's a well out in the middle of a field. There's nothing around it. Um, you got a couple of options. They do make a uh, like a electric heat wire, and it's it's insulated and everything. So obviously you have power somewhere because you have a water well, and we're building a house. So there's likely a temporary. You need to, if you have a if you have access to a 110 outlet somewhere, plug that puppy into that and wrap it around the well. That's okay. an option. Um, if you don't have that or everywhere is sold out of them, which is probably the case, although not, not too far off, um, you can probably find one between Angleton and Lake Jackson. Somebody's going to have one. Some Ace Hardware store is going to have one on a top shelf with a ton of dust on it <laughs> that no one's touched in two years. It's going to be there. Um, if not, this is where you got to be willing to get down and dirty. Okay. We're talking blankets, moving blankets, um, duct tape. I have seen one. I'm not kidding you. I will drive down to it. It's not far from where I am right now. Uh, between here and the little town I go to, they, they have they put two twin mattresses around it, like bent them nice. around the water tank and and duct taped it there. So um, that's anything. Okay, at this point, it's truly any. We are we are all about function over form right now. Okay, we are within 72 hours of this. Do not care about what it looks like. Just get some protection on there. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the most vulnerable points are, you know, not the tank itself, although it has some vulnerability to it. Another option, David, unless you're mm-hmm. living on it, drain it. Um, it'll have a little water spigot at the bottom of it. If you're really, really concerned about it, you're not living on it. I'd drain that joker. I don't, I'm not taking any chances. Okay. Um, I'm only doing the stuff I was talking about doing. If I'm living, like if, if I need that water to, for me and my family, if it's just at the job site and in the well out there, Turn the water well off. So turn the breaker to the water well off. Mm-hmm. Drain it. Um, drain everything out of it. And I know that's a big way. It's also 120 gallon tank. Best case scenario, it's got 90 gallons of water in it. They only fill up 80 percent anyway. You got an air bubble at the top. Trust me, that that 90 gallons of water is nothing compared to what you would have to spend to replace the tank or the piping. Um, but drain it. And then the parts that are at the, bo- anything below where that hose bib, that water spigot is where you're draining anything below that, any of the piping, just wrap the fire out of it or blankets, towels, duct tape, insulate down there. Right. Cause it, it won't drain that part. It'll only drain whatever's at the hose bib and above. So. Okay. All right. And then Larry is asking, um, what about a lamp with an old school incandescent light, light bulb in the well house for heat? I'm all for it. Larry, I'm, I'm good with that. Um, I'm particularly good for it if it's not connected to the house. Uh, that way, if something does happen to catch fire, heaven forbid, it's it's just out there. It's the well house. But yeah, mm-hmm. I'm all for it. Yeah, if you can get you a 150 amp bulb, um, I wish Radio Shack was still open because they had them. I think my grandfather bought the last 178, 150 watt bulbs there were in the world. Um, and they're all fashed. And I'm not telling you where he's got them. So 
<laughs> but but he's got we have 150 and 200 watt bulbs and yeah that that's a great idea a lamp in there mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a little old school astros astros lamp i can't get to the camera there it is yeah this perfect put a bulb in it this is an led bulb it'll do you no good but yeah i was gonna say to put it put an incandescent <laughs> bulb in it and um and it generate anything that can generate a little bit of heat uh i know the box stores have they had a lot of little um ceramic heaters those are safer mm -hmm. um those little ceramic heaters, they're like 50 bucks. If you got, if, again, if you've got power in that well house, which you have power close because you have a well, um, figure out a way to get power, run extension cord from your house to there and get that little heater in there going. Anything that'll generate, again, we're not trying to, you know, we're not making a sauna. All we're trying to do is keep it 33 degrees. That's all we're trying to do. Right. Yep. So, Just got to keep it above freezing. Okay. Um, Julie's sharing, we initially wrapped our wrapped ours um, in the heat blanket bubble wrap from our pool. Uh, we had to get creative. Yeah, that's right. So, good plan. Um, and let's see. Uh, Tad's sharing, when we build, hopefully next year, we are considering a generator for time like the, times like these. Thoughts on natural gas, propane generator, generator i.e. Generac. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. Um, I've, I've had... One on the last two houses that I've done. Um, I will put one on any house I do. Uh, I've had, I've had mine have been both natural gas or propane. Uh, natural gas, you know, natural gas only if natural gas is available, right? You don't have natural mm -hmm. gas everywhere. Most of our customers are going to, if they do one, it's going to be in propane. Um, diesel is another option, uh, but I would talk to the folks about that. The but propane is going to be what most of our customers end up going with. And yeah, I mean, usually, and again, you'll hear whole home, whole house, whatever. Me personally, I don't, you don't need to run your whole house. Okay. Like, right. If you have three AC units and two freezers or three freezers and, you know, gaming consoles, not like, okay, fine. But 24, you know, 23, 24 kilowatt is going to run pretty much all, everything that's necessary on every house that we build. Um, there'll be very few exceptions to that. The, the kicker is when you start to get above 24, 25 KW, 24, 25,000 watt generators, you move from an air cooled engine to a water cooled or liquid cooled engine, and the price gets crazy different. Yeah. Um, okay. So it just, you know, how big a deal is it to you? I, I don't know. You know, um, they're not cheap, but, you know, if you've got, a, let's say most insurances, you've probably got a one or 2% deductible on your home for damage, right? Let's say. So let's say, you know, on a, on a $500,000 house, that's $10,000 for the deductible. Um, the generator is about seven to, to nine, depending on what size and where, where you have it done. So it's Pretty good investment. Yeah. It's a good investment. Yeah. Yeah. So basically if, it, if this happens twice, your generator's paid for itself. Yeah. All right. Don't um, overload. It. Yeah. I'm um, Tara Sharon. Hello from Kaufman built our little port just closed last week. The kids are super stoked for an or stocked for an early Christmas gift. And we've been waiting for a year and a half. Awesome. Oh, okay. That's, amazing. That's great. So excited for you guys. That's yeah. Amazing. We're excited about that. Um, and then let's see. Um, David's saying that was all great advice. He'll drain it and he's headed to Ace Hardware. Yeah. Um, I'm a fan of Al is saying I'm putting a heater in my well house tonight. Yeah, I, I still would say, guy, anytime you're going to put a heater inside any enclosed space, go check on it. Like tonight's, mm -hmm. you know, Thursday night is not going to be the night you get a, a long winter's nap. Okay, I'm be vigilant. Don't put you or your family in danger. If you put a heater anywhere, even a lamp, something like that, go check on it. Go check yeah. on it. Go check on it. Check to make sure nothing bad is happening, both with the lamp itself or with the pipes. Um, just, just go check. It, it, yeah. You know, not, not to say that you shouldn't have some level of peace or comfort, but alert, be alert. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Everybody be safe. Want to do everything yeah. safely. Yeah. 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 No reason to go nuts. No reason to panic. Everything in a house can be fixed. Everything, everything, mm -hmm. everything. Um, but this is just, if we can prevent that from happening, that would be awesome. Um, so a couple of things, Oh, a couple other pointers. Um, again, if it's not a lived in home or a home, if you're going to lose power, if you're not living in the house, or if you even are in there and lose power, we talked about opening that dispering stairway before to get some heat up to that attic, um, open up your cabinet doors. So where you got, uh, plumbing and things like that, open those cabinet doors up to those sinks, uh, and faucets so that the heat that's in the home can get into those cabinets. Again, we're, we're playing a, it's a very small game we're playing. We're trying to tip it from 31 32 to 32 33 that's all we're trying to do um and every little bit helps and 
So open the cabinet doors, let some of the heat get in, maybe drop the spring stairway down if you're concerned about it getting free, you know, check the temperature up there. Um, but but uh, again, just be vigilant, be alert. Um, you're smart people because you built with us, so we know you're smart. Um, what other questions do we have? I think we're sort of um, let's see. Uh, Julie is asking, are you noticing quicker builds these days? Anything you were noticing that is still delays in getting? Um, yeah, the build times are definitely coming down. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our build times are coming down. Um, there are still some delays. It's not nearly as bad as it was. Some of the flex duct is still a, a, a case. Um, you know, so and, and but that's really about the only thing that I've heard of recently that, that there's still issues getting. Um, the other lead times are brick, bricks got kind of a long lead time. Uh, mm -hmm. times like weeks like this are not gonna help. Um, those those plants will shut down because they got so uh they got damaged badly the last time this happened, February 21. Yes. That they are not going to take those risks. They will they will wind those plants down to make sure they don't have a catastrophic failure. So it will take time to ramp them back. You know, it's not just a switch like a light we turn off and on like we do in our house. Mm -hmm. It is a it is an operation to take one of those down and, and fire one back up. So okay. All right. And Joe is saying a new home construction question. I thought that Tilson put water piping in the slab. My current residence has hot and cold headers in the attic connected to drop downs. All right. So great question, Joe. And the answer is we've done it both ways. Uh, mm -hmm. Over 90 years, we've done it every way you can. But yeah, so my my first Tilson home I built um, in 2004, all the plumbing was in the slab. Copper piping in the slab. <gasps> By the way, the house is fine. It's still there. Um, there no, no, one, no one died. Everything's fine. But the you know there are some downsides to that. If things go wrong, it makes it tougher to repair and it can do more damage. So if you have a leaking mm -hmm. pipe in a foundation that can do damage that you don't, that doesn't manifest itself for a long time. And I know that sounds weird to try and plan on. Okay. The beauty of having water piping in the attic is so that if something happens, we know immediately. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> you it starts want, raining everyone, and we know. Correct. You don't ever want anything to happen, but repairing sheetrock is way easier than repairing foundations. So mm -hmm. whereas on a foundation, on a water leak that's in a foundation, that causes damage that you may not notice or manifest itself in a way, except until it starts moving the house around, you can't open door and, by then it's a, it's a catastrophic failure. Um, so that was one of the main reasons we took it out. There's just not a lot of margin for error. Um, mm -hmm. I know that sound, it's going to sound kind of anti-quality, anti-business, but really what we're trying to do is mitigate the, the ways things can go wrong during construction. It's a job site. Okay. There's, it's not a ballet play. It's not an operating room. It's a job site, big trucks going around guys with tools, boots, Mm -hmm. it, um, if copper got, if it got, you know, when you're pouring that concrete, I don't know if y'all have ever go watch and watch the video we're pouring, there's guys stepping everywhere. There's, you know, concrete weighs tons, literally tons and tons. And yeah. Dumping it on top of what we were copper pipes. And that's a, it can be, it's a delicate, can be a delicate thing. And if someone steps in the wrong place or hits it with the wrong thing, you got a problem. If that copper comes in contact with the steel, the rebar or the, um, uh, any of the mesh that was in the slab, Again, it's a two-year period it takes. It's called electrolysis. It'll actually eat a hole in that copper. Oh wow! Um, okay. Again, you don't. It takes years for it to do that. About two or three. But once it happens, you're there. So that's when it was sleeved. Anyway, kind of like going back to the um, what was the upside downside we were talking about before? Uh, oh, masonry fireplaces. There's just mm -hmm. not enough upside to having the plumbing in the slab as there used to be. Once PEX came on the scene, because before you. Running copper through the attic was just about as bad as running copper through the slab. It's only a matter of time until right. it bursts. It's going to burst. Even if you insulate it, it's going to burst. Once mm -hmm. PEX came on the scene, broadly, game changer. You can run that in the attic and like, like what you're talking about now and, and have drop downs. It, it has not been a factor. And again, you're in Laporte, Texas. You know, the the number of times it does this, it's so inf like it hadn't done this in two years. Uh, prior to that, I don't know if it ever being this cold before. But, you know, global warming is changing everything. So the <laughs> climate change. It's climate oh, that's change. right. I forgot. We got to change the name. Climate change. Um, the narrative is not, nonetheless, not why you came here. But that's all the, science. To us, there were way more advantages to having the, the PEX piping in the attic than it were to running anything in the slab, anything in the slab. The only part that's going to go to the slab is where it comes into the house and first, the main, like, you know, three quarter or one inch line that comes up. That's it. Everything else is run overhead. Okay. Makes sense. Um, Rhonda Sharon, my driftwood fireplace heats things up very well. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Good. Good to hear that. Good. Um, and then Andy, how does the make up air work when using the fireplace, vent fans, etc.? Make up air. I wish I answered this right. 
um, I mean, it's, you know, you, fires need fresh air. Um, mm-hmm. that's, that, you know, the fuel is wood that you're burning or gas and oxygen. So they have to have those things. Um, is if, if some of our fireplaces we do because we're for have a fresh air intake. So an, an additional, now some are powered, some are not. So some are powered, some are passive. Um, and you're saying vent fan, so that probably means you got some kind of vents on the fireplace itself. You flip a switch, and it all what it's doing, what that's doing, if I'm if I'm understanding this correctly, because um, I had one on the Preston that I built. Um, all it's doing is moving air around the firebox, that metal firebox we're talking about itself, and blowing that now heated air out into the room. So it's kind of additional okay. heat. So it's not actually sucking air into the fireplace, if that makes sense. It's actually a, it's a blower that's typically below the uh, fireplace that's it's sucking air from around the, the cavity that is around the, the chimney flue and around the firebox itself. It's drawing that air around the firebox, which is heated, the fire because the fire is making the metal hot. Mm-hmm. And that heats the air and then blows that into the room. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's powered, that it's forcing air into. There is a, a product called a forced air kit that uh, I believe we have available or had available um, for a time. That is what I'm talking about, that you actually you will pull uh, fresh air in from the outside to help the combustion process. Um, again, most customers, it, it's there for ambiance, they burn a little fire here and there now and then. Uh, but that's, that's uh, hopefully I answered your question with those. But the, the reality is, um, you need some type of fresh air. That's what I'm talking about a while ago, like maybe opening a window a little bit um, into a family room to be able to keep a big fire going. Otherwise, you'll find that it, it keeps the fire keeps kind of dying out. That's mm-hmm. an indication of a very well built home. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. it's it's tight. Yep. All right, that makes sense. And that is the last question I see. Beautiful. Well, um, I am very very grateful that uh, you guys came on here to see this. I hope it was helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, hope you guys got some. If you got if you have questions in the interim, you know between now and then, holler. Uh, we'll be glad to help you out. You know, we can reach out to us on Facebook, on YouTube. Um, you can you can reach out. Oh, Andy oh. was clarifying. He's talking about the kitchen and bath exhaust. Oh, um, so those are vented out uh, through an exhaust exhaust fans. Um, so kitchen, you have a vent hood, a hood, so over your cooktop and that hood vents all the way up through the attic and outside. So it, it actually goes out the roof. Um, sometimes a gable in, but typically a roof. And then same thing with your bathrooms and utility room. You're going to have exhaust fans in every single one of those. Uh, and, and I highly recommend you run them. Like when you're taking a shower and steaming mm-hmm. up again, your house is super, super tight, turn the exhaust fan on every time, uh, when you're washing or drying clothes. Turn the exhaust fan on. Get the get that moist air out of the house. Um, okay. They take it all the way out, and that that those are actually installed by the HVAC company. So that's a great great question. But yeah, uh, okay. any questions in the interim, guys, ask us. We you guys Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, uh, the website. We, our design centers will all be open unless we can't access them safely. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. We'll be posting those kind of things, obviously, um, as the week progresses. But don't hesitate to reach out. You can call us. Our uh, new home specialists are waiting to standing by to answer your questions. Um, mm-hmm. We're thinking about building a home on your land and want a little bit of this knowledge in your dream home. We can make that happen. That's what we do. Absolutely. So um, we genuinely hope you guys have a very Merry Christmas with you and your families. Yes. Um, and we are excited to see you guys later on in 2023. So, Don, thank you for doing this. Yeah, Merry thank Christmas, you. Dawn. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. And yeah, guys, this will be, we're going to take the next couple of weeks off of being live, but we'll, we'll play some of our favorite episodes for you and we'll still monitor the chat and stuff, but we're going to, we're going to take some times with our, with our families and then we'll be back in the new year. I mean, we're still working and stuff. We're not going to be on yeah. Facebook and YouTube. We're just not going to be on Facebook. Everybody else is like taking actual like vacations and stuff. So we have to like do real work. Right. Kind of right. stinks. I know, <laughs> but they deserve it. They've earned it. So yes, Merry do. Christmas to all of you. Thank you for trusting, um, our family's little company. We're grateful for each and every one of you. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. We'll see you all in 2023. Adios. Bye, everybody.